Hi everyone, this is Gun from Stanford, and I will talk about uh, key characteristics of the main optimal stable matching in random matching markets with tiers. And this is based on joint work with Itali Ashlaki, Mark Braverman, Clay Thomas, and Amin Saberi. We will study the stable marriage problem, which in the standard analogy describes matching N men to N women, where each of the agents has a complete preference order over all agents on the other side. And we will be concerned about the stable matchings, which is defined as matchings where there are no pairs of men and women uh, who wants to deviate from their currently assigned partner to each other instead. In particular, we want to study the man optimal stable matching, which is given by the algorithm called man proposing deferred acceptance or DA in short. And it is also co commonly referred to as uh, the Gale Shapley algorithm. In this algorithm, we have men proposing to women in the order of their preferences, and women, upon receiving um, proposals, will tentatively accept the best proposal they have seen so far. And the process continues until all men are met, or equivalently, until the last woman receives and hence accepts the last proposal from the last man. We have seen a bunch of literature studying the behaviors of the stable matchings in markets where the agent's preferences are homogeneous or the preferences are uniformly random. And this can be seen in various literatures from even many decades ago until recently on balanced and unbalanced markets. However, we generally know very little about uh, markets where the preferences are non-uniform. That means the distribution of preferences are not uniformly random. So this work will be devoted to studying the di uh, difference in quality across agents on both sides. And in particular, we want to tackle the following two um, problems. First, we want to deduce the expected rank for each agent in the market. So the rank is defined as the index of one's partner in this individual's preference list. And we want to mention that uh, lower means better here for ranks, because if you have rank one, it means you're matched to your favorite partner. And the second problem is the distribution of match types, which means uh, what fraction of the matches are between men and women of certain types or certain tiers, which we will formalize in the next slide. We consider this model for tiered matching market. Uh, where we have n men and n women shown here, and each side will be divided into a fixed number of tiers. Uh, and the tiers are uh, of fractional size delta for men and epsilon for women. And for each tier of man or woman, uh, we have positive score, uh, where we consider as weight, uh, associated with each of the agents to mark their quality, and the higher the better. The preferences for each agent will be generated uh, independently by sampling without replacement from all agents on the other side. And the sampling probability is proportional to um, the individual's public scores on the other side. So uh, for example, each man will sample women uh, without replacement and uh, the probability is uh, alpha i, which is the score of each woman over n epsilon dot alpha as vector dot product, which is just the sum of all scores for women. And the key assumption here is that all preferences are IIB. We want to give you a quick overview of our core results. First, uh, we, we showed that the rank of agents on each side is essentially inversely proportional to uh, his or her score. And second, the distribution of match types, which is the fraction of matches between men and women of different tiers, is essentially uniform. And both results hold um, when the market is sufficiently large. Now to zoom in on our first result about average rent, and again, just to remind you here, lower means better. Uh, if we adopt a notation of alpha mean, uh, standing for the minimum among all alphas for women, and beta inverse as a vector is the component-wise inverse of the beta vector, we have the expected rank for tier J men and tier I women given by um, these two expressions marked as one and two. 
So um, there are quite a few terms, but we want to give you some core insight out of them. Uh, you will first notice that asymptotically, these are really the same as what we have for the uniform market. Uh, namely, it is long n for men's average rank and n over long n for women's rank. And apparently, uh, men who are proposing here are having a very large advantage over women who receive proposals. And second, uh, to individual level, a man or woman's rank, uh, expected rank is essentially inversely proportional to his or her score, as you can see in the uh, dependency on alpha i and beta j in the denominator. And finally, we comment on that um, tiers on one side are in fact affected the same amount by the tier structure on the other side, as you can see um, that the highlighted terms have no dependency on i and j. And our second piece of result is about the distribution of batch type. Um, and this might be a bit surprising at the first look, as we showed that in expectation, the fraction of matches between tier J men and tier I women is just delta J times epsilon I. And these are the two uh, fractional sizes of the two tiers in their uh, corresponding size. And in other words, this just means that the distribution of match type is approximately uniform as these fractions do not depend on the quality or scores among each tier. This might be some kind of surprising given that our previous result shows that higher tier men actually are expected to be better off proportionally than lower tier men. But here we are essentially observing that in a macroscopic view, higher tier men in fact don't really have an advantage in getting matched to higher tier women. And this also indicates that um, our model with um, gaps in quality of a finite amount really doesn't give a lot of predictive power on the match type for each individual. And for the rest of the talk, we'll spend some time going over some quick um, ideas and observations for our proof. And we'll finally talk about some extensions. So first, uh, the first step in the proof is to uh, consider the total number of proposals. And in fact, um, notice that in our model, we have tiers on both sides. And uh, to simplify our proof, we will actually split our problem into two pieces. And by considering the sub cases of having only tiers in the women's side, and then tiers only in the men's side. And it turns out that these two sub cases compose very well. So for now, we consider the simplified case where uh, men are uniform and women are divided into tiers. Our result mentioned earlier, in fact, simplify into this, um, which is average ranks for men and women of different tiers. The intuition here for this uh, sub case is that essentially men uh, are competing to avoid, in some sense, to get matched to um, lower tier women. And it's actually easy to see that women of better scores or higher quality attracts more proposals from men proportionally than uh, their lower score counterparts. Also a uh, side comment is that we'll notice that women's rank are not dependent on the tier um, sizes, epsilon. Uh, for each woman, uh, her expected rank only depends on her score and actually the score of the lowest tier women. We start by studying the total number of proposals during the deferred acceptance process. And um, imagine in the uniform market, this is actually um, pretty well studied. And this is just very similar to a coupon collector problem uh, where TI marks the time or the number of proposals needed for the I distinct woman to receive a proposal. And uh, we only need to take the sum of ti for, for i uh, from one to n, where n is the number of all women. And it's easy to see that uh, this is essentially n times log n. Of course, there's a slight nuance because in deferred acceptance, um, men will not propose to the same woman again, but coupon collector, you may collect the same coupon multiple times. Uh, but it's, it's actually very easy to show that the effect, the difference here is very small and insignificant. 
to handle the tiered market, we start by noticing that the bottom tier, as we said earlier, in fact, is the least popular and receive least proposal. So it is expected that the bottom tier will receive the final proposal that terminates the deferred acceptance process. And using the same coupon collector argument, we can show that the number of proposals to the bottom tier uh, will be roughly this absolute mean times n and then times log of absolute mean times n, where absolute mean marks the size of the uh, worst tier. And also we know that in expectation, we should have uh, these so many fraction of proposals among all proposals that go to the bo uh, bottom tier. So that indicates that the total number of proposals must be n times log, log n uh, up to a constant factor that depends on the tier structure of the winner. And based on this, it's, it is very easy to deduce the average rank of men, which is just this divided by n, and also um, the average number of proposals received by each woman, uh, because we know they distribute proportionally to score. And the second case is where we have men in tiers and women are uniform. And this helps us to study um, the distribution of proposals uh, from um, different tiers of men. And our earlier result simplified into these expressions for men and the women. And in fact, we want to emphasize that um, what we really need to show is just that rank for men is um, proportional to one over beta, their scores, uh, because the grayed out factor in the denominator is really just a normalizing constant to make the average rank of men to be um, log n, as we showed earlier. And our main tool for studying this proof is that uh, it is well known in the 70s that the deferred acceptance process is independent of the order of proposals. So uh, if we want to study the rank of a man M star, we may just hold him and let all other men propose and find a match before uh, M star does, and then let M star propose and possibly kicking out some other men uh, who will eventually make proposals to the last, um, last woman. And the second tool is the principle of deferred decisions, which is a, a crucial part in our proof. Uh, so in this case, we consider this gamma sub w to be the sum of scores from all the proposers to a woman w. And at this step, if M star proposes to w, the proposal will be accepted with a probability a beta star over beta star plus the sum of all previous scores. Um, as you can see, this is basically W making her decision of whether to um, accept or reject on the fly. And with those tools, we now have the result relying on these following lemmas. First, we claim that with high probability, no man will make too many proposals. Here, uh, for example, too many can be uh, log square of n, which is essentially little o of n. That's what we care about. And second, uh, we only say that most women have, uh, upon the very end of the DA's process, received a lot of proposals. And this is not surprising because we know the proposals go to women um, as IID random variables, and that should be very good bound on concentration. With, so with this lemma, let's consider a man M with a score, for example, one proposing last. And before he is about to propose, let's consider the process is already done and define little p to be the probability that um, M samples a woman out of the entire population and propose and get accepted. And as we have mentioned earlier, this is just the expectation of one over uh, one plus gamma W where W is drawn uh, from the sampling distribution. So, Imagine M were to propose with replacement, and that means he will sample a woman and propose, maybe rejecting, but sample uh, uh, independently a second woman. Um, if this were the case, then the number of proposals until he get the first acceptance is exactly geometric random variable of probability P. However, we know there's some deviation because he will not be uh, proposing with replacement. 
Um, but we know that he will not make too many proposals. In fact, no one will have too many proposals. So the difference here is actually insignificant. And although not exactly, this number of proposals is roughly geometric of P. Also, the second lemma tells us that uh, when a woman accepts M, she should be very happy about M and M should be very likely to stay um, at his first acceptance. In fact, the likelihood is a constant order. Also, if the market is large, then we have um, this gamma W, the sum of scores also being large. Uh, we observe the following approximation, which tells us that um, if we define P prime, similar to P to be the probability of acceptance, except for a man with score beta, uh, then P prime is roughly just beta times P. So of course, all, uh, our previous discussion, depending on the setup mu before uh, M actually makes his proposals. So now what we need to show is that for all setups, this is in fact true that um, the number of proposals needed for M is roughly a geometric of a parameter that is proportional to this man's score beta. And this will lead us to our final uh, result about man's number of proposal, where uh, essentially it says the number of proposals made by each man is proportional to uh, one over beta. Finally, as the last step, we will combine the um, results in the previous two, and we'll consider uh, markets with tiers on both sides. So the key takeaway here is that we have the expected number of proposals from all men in, for example, tier J to a woman W in tier I, uh, given by this expression. And notice that the blue terms highlighted the dependency on the men's tier J. In other words, we, we observe that um, this number uh, is proportional to the woman's score and inversely proportional to the men's score of that tier. And this result allows us to recover our original form uh, of the expected ranks for uh, women in each tier and men in each tier. Finally, we want to devote a minute or two uh, to the distribution of match type, a result that we thought is uh, pretty interesting. Um, since we know the number of proposals from each tier of men to women in each tier, we can now ask what is the probability that a woman has her favorite proposal from uh, men in tier J. Notice that uh, each of these proposals can be the favorite with probability proportional to beta J, and the number of such proposals is inversely proportional to beta J. And this combined means that a woman W will favor a man in tier J as her favorite with probability independent of beta J and only depending on, in fact, the tier size delta J. And therefore we got the result about the uniform match type distribution, which says in expectation, the fraction of matches between different tiers of men and women is just the product of the uh, corresponding fractional tier sizes. And again, we want to emphasize that the, the intuition behind this result is that lower tier men or men of worse quality will make more proposals um, in order to get accepted. And on the other hand, each of the proposal is also less likely to be uh, the favorite. So these two effects exactly counteract each other. And specifically, for example, a top tier man is less likely to propose to a bottom tier woman, but if he does so, his proposal is more likely to win. And on the other, on the other hand, we will have a huge amount of bottom tier men proposing to top tier women. And those women are likely to take maybe at least one of those men. This result indicates that our model of constant disparity tiers of quality, in fact, does not enforce much a priori structure on the resulted match type. And finally, we will talk about uh, some possible extensions and future work. First, we would like to generalize our model to include individualized scores as opposed to scores of a limited or finite number of tiers. In fact, as long as we have independence, our tools should still apply, but we do need to develop new methods 
to handle correlated scores if, if we desire. The second interesting direction is to study the imbalanced markets uh, where, for example, there are fewer men than women. Because as we have seen, such markets exhibit very different characteristics as uh, a balanced market. And also we have observed that in such market, the rank wouldn't be um, exactly pro inversely proportional to the score. And also that we've seen that the match type will not be strictly uniform again in, in balanced markets. And finally, we want to ask how our model can contribute to the study of mechanism design. Um, for example, if you consider the, the actual problem of matching doctors to hospitals through interviews, um, there is actually additional cost associated with uh, each application, and this is not captured in our current model so far. Further, we may also study uh, more permissive models where, for example, stability can have some more general and relaxed definition that is different than the current standard definition of strict stability.